my most memorable connection with AGN was the trip to Trinidad and Tobago in 2018 to attend the Latin American Congress on Conservation Biology. It was a fantastic experience. Uh, I developed new sources uh, among the scientists and the NGO representatives that attended this Congress and I learned that uh, our environmental problems are uh, pretty much similar and, and um, pretty much interconnected in uh, our, our region in, in Latin America and the Caribbean. And I met uh, fantastic people among the journalists who travel with me and I actually uh, now keep the relationship with them and we help each other in some stories we write. My name is Wang Yan. I work for News China magazine based in Beijing. I have been granted with a, a couple of grants as well as a few fellowship programs offered by EGN. Um, I have to say through the fellowship programs, I have been able to cover a lot of issues which I might not be able to cover. Thus, EGN is really very, very supportive in supporting environment journalists to explore the wider world of environment issues. Shundarbans, this is the world's largest mangrove forest. And thanks to EGN in 2018, with my colleagues in Bangladesh, I had the opportunity to train citizen and mainstream local journalists about community storytelling and ocean literacy in this coastal region. We conducted field workshops and ran a collaborative newsroom. Now, trained community members are able to explore the connections between the ocean and human well-being, to investigate the human dimensions of conservation and climate, and to tell the human stories. As part of the project, we have published the guidebook on the essential principles and fundamental concepts of Bay of Bengal Literacy and established a regional ocean literacy network involving organizations from the other Bay of Bengal countries. In my uh, daily reporting, being a reporter of the Ganeshakti in India, uh, the newspaper, uh, we have to do, deal with different situations in local and adverse policy decisions. But EGN has taken the framework to work how to do the reporting actually in a scientific manner. The most important impact of EGN was the motivation to start the effectiveness of Infomazonia and all other Infos platforms motivated us to create Info San Francisco related to San Francisco Basin. Info San Francisco was done with the technical support of Info Amazonia. Simultaneously, we started organizing our geo journalist network along the Rio San Francisco riversides. Info San Francisco was built, have in mind a future expansion to the other regions of San Francisco. At present, it's one of our most important projects. The first time I came in contact with Earth Journalism Network was 2015, when I was uh, given a, a fellowship to attend the uh, UN Conference on Climate Change. So uh, this was in France and I met uh, very good people from Earth Journalism Network who were introduced to uh, uh, geojournalism. So, uh, so after this conference, I came back to Uganda and uh, worked with the journalists from the US and we launched a geojournalism uh, platform called InfoNile. Now at, at InfoNile, at the end of this year, we'll have given over 100 journalists grants to do geojournalism stories uh, in the Nile Basin. This is a very good uh, uh, opportunity that I, I got from Earth Journalism Network and I think I am what I am right now because of Earth Journalism Network. They are very good people. Every year, Earth Journalism Network or EGN support us with programs, grants, training and fellowship. I, as journalist, also have very good experience with the EGN. In 2007, I got CCMP Fellowship or Climate Change Media Partner. This program opened my eyes that environmental issue is the most important problem on the earth. Why? Because we only have one planet. Happy birthday, Earth Journalism Network. Wish you all the best and always support the environmental journalism. I attended 
a press conference organized by the EJNet, and I was impressed and attracted to the training of journalists on climate change issues because it's a global problem. The following year, 2017, I applied to attend the 23rd session in Bonn, Germany through the EJNet, and I was selected. I got empowered through the fellowship training program in Germany. I first knew EGN 10 years ago when they invited me to go to the Climate Change Summit in Copenhagen. Ever since, I have worked with EGN in different projects. With time, I became one of their editors and also one of their mentors. And as a mentor, I created a group with my students in Cartagena. It was a group called Yucapela, an amazing experience for my students and also for me. We reported and wrote many stories about the Colombian Caribbean, and it was such an amazing experience for my students that some of them actually became environmental journalists. I believe this road that has been important for me and very meaningful started because of the first doors that EGN opened for me. So I'm very thankful with the organization and with the whole team. I wish you a very happy anniversary and all the success in the projects to come. There's a very interesting story I never forget about EGN and me. Actually, in 2009, they were here to host a workshop on climate change. I knew it at the last hour. So I talked to a local organizer and said I need to be there, but he said it's already full. So I went to the venue half an hour before and then told him about the importance and me getting that opportunity to really engage on that workshop. He managed to accommodate me and that is where my journey with EZN started. In the last 10 years, I was able to train hundreds of journalists in South Asia and abroad, and I have done hundreds of articles uh, from around the world. It was an amazing experience. So I would like EZN to grow and grow and grow, and it is a happy moment to share, and I would like to say happy 15th anniversary to EZN. Cheers, guys. I've been in collaboration with the Internews Earth Journalism Network since the launch of um, the Climate Change Media Partnership, and that was 12 years ago. It's also through EJN that the Philippine Network of Environmental Journalists was established in 2010. Since then, hundreds of journalists were given the right resources, motivation, and um, support to report more on environmental issues. Most of them actually uh, were given exemplary recognition over the past few years. It was um, encouraging to see journalists taking the initiative to strengthen environmental journalism in the Philippines, um, highlighting climate resilience and, um, of course, other environmental issues. So, way to go, EJN. I was chosen for the CCMP fellowships in 2010. I was to COP15 in Cancun. It was a great experience for my whole career. I was a fellow at COP21, and it was a great experience to both learn and cover one of the most important climate events. Hey, so many achievements of Claves 21 wouldn't have been possible with the hard support and collaboration from EJM. Well, thanks to EJN, we started Claves 21 in Argentina with Damiana, and I started as a fellow at uh, COP in Lima and then moved as a mentor in other COPs. So, uh, part of my career was thankfully developed thanks to EJN. Felices 15 años. Felices 15 años. Argentina. Muchos más.